Whoa, they did a great job of packing these nice and safe. Yeah. Woo! It's like the weight of a small child. <laughs> oh! We're doing something really exciting today. What are we doing today, Bron? Today we're building the battery bank rack. I'm so freaking stoked. This is exciting because this means that we could start installing the batteries, the charge controller, the inverter, basically all the brains of the solar system. We've got our solar panels now also. Uh, we've got six lithium ion batteries from Battleborn and uh, we are getting our angle iron ready to uh, to build the rack. This is gonna be so much fun. And we're super excited because these babies pump out at least double the amount that lead acid batteries do. Which means we can run all the things that we ever wanted, like my hair dryer. Enough of the chit chat, let's build this battery bank. But before we get to work, we better pro up. Ear pro. I pro. Glove pro. I think if they're all snugged up, then that'll lower the footprint. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Keep them from vibrating too. Yeah. Out into the tundra. Yeah, this thing throws so many sparks. I'm kind of nervous to, to run it inside the uh, inside the barn. We have, but it's not the best idea we've ever had. getting blasted with sparks. So we're gonna get this little horse thing. Here you go. Cool. What was that? Dead nut. By dead nut, he means the same size. I think that's gonna work perfectly. Sweet. Nice. Nice job, Garcia. So this is a way to do a 90 degree joint uh, without having to cut a 45 degree angle. All you do is notch one piece of the angle iron so the other end one beds in and you're able to achieve that 90 degree uh, corner. And then you just weld the corners together and then clean it up with uh, the flap disc so it's nice and smooth. There you go. Nice. Now it'll be easier to weld. Yeah, good job. Rock and roll. Let's go. All right, perfect. So right now I'm just dry fitting the uh, batteries in the frame. We have one more piece to build is the middle piece that'll go right between the batteries to kind of keep them centered. Uh, but I left a little bit of wiggle room because we're gonna have to have 
some attachments and stuff to hold these down. Uh, but it's coming out great. The corners are tacked. I'm gonna go ahead and finish the weld on those. And then after that, uh, fabricate the middle piece that will be the center for the tray. It's coming out great so far, y'all. I made these little cleats here uh, for the side. I'll weld them on and we'll bolt them completely through the floor of the basement. The center pieces came out good. Um, so what I'll do is I'll clean up the edges first and then I'll come in here and um, measure it out, put the batteries in place and uh, see where I need to notch. So notching this out right here, we'll do the same thing as these corners. It makes the surface of these two pieces level and that'll accomplish the exact same thing right here so that this surface here is level with this surface and the batteries will rest completely all in line, perfectly level, which is really, really good. They'll be nice and secure this way and uh, I think this is gonna work pretty good, guys. It seems like it's gonna be a pretty secure battery bank rack for our Battleborn lithium batteries. So um, let's keep fabricating. This is a lot of fun. These are the bird. We can then lay out our little feet. Uh, we also need to drill some holes in those. Yeah, we'll do that next. This one is the right one. This one is perfect. perfect. So that fits nicely. Uh, we'll dry fit the batteries in there. But before we do that, let's drill some holes in these so that they can accept the bolts that are gonna go through the floor. Something I like about these batteries is that they are way lighter than lead acid batteries. Um, when we went to go charge the batteries on the bus, uh, they're the same size as these, like physically, dimension wise, but they weigh a ton more than these. Cool. I think that is probably pretty good spacing on those. 
Um, I went ahead and left a little gap between them so that uh, so that the straps could fit through the middle here. So I think that'll work pretty good on this here design. Uh, these little feet cleats that I fabbed, I think are doing, gonna go great here on the sides. And then they'll bolt through the floor, all the way through the entire thickness of the floor. Um, so that'll be wonderful also. And I think we're probably gonna have to paint this because it's uh, bare, bare steel. So we'll do that also. All right, let's get to welding. So even though the battery dimensions say they're 12 and 3 quarters, 12 and 3 quarters is at the top of the battery. The bottom seems to be a little bit tapered by maybe about eh, a little bit more than half an inch. So I'm doing 12 and a quarter and that gives me a little bit of wiggle room around the base so that the batteries go in and out of their uh, little rack very smoothly. Looks like that one's nice and set. I'll also set this this side to 12 and a quarter because that seemed to work out really well on the other side. Nice. All right, now that it's all cleaned up, dry fit looks good. We're gonna go ahead and weld these feet on. I think that this battery bank went together beautifully. The feet went on wonderfully. The mounting brackets, uh, they fit so well in their little battery bank rack. Nice separation here so that we can get the straps through. There's so many different ways that you could strap down batteries. You can use uh, hard steel, like let's say we had some angle iron up here. You can have it bolted down. You could also use webbing strapped up and around with a, a buckle of some kind. Um, there's so many different, I've seen ratcheting straps, people use those. So I think that we might use actual webbing. And so what that will do is before we bolt this down, we'll lay the webbing down underneath and have it long enough so that it can uh, connect up here at top. And uh, we'll buckle each one of these down probably individually, and they'll be uh, looped underneath. We don't have the webbing yet, but we will, now that we know what we're probably gonna do, we can go get that webbing and secure these. Uh, this is just wonderful. There, there, There's just a little bit of play in there, which is good. That means that we'll be able to slide them in and out easily if we ever needed to. I am so stoked about this. This looks wonderful. Next up, we'll degrease the battery bank and uh, then we'll prime it and paint it.
right, now that the primer is on and we've got it suspended by the little screws that I put in, that way I could spray both sides at one time because only the tip of the screw is uh, suspending it above the table there. Um, I've got the voltmeter and I'm gonna check all the voltage of these and see what they came with from Battleborn. Alrighty, battery number one. 13.28 volts. Battery number two, 13.28 volts. So far, so good. Battery number three, 13.28 volts. Battery number four, 13.28 volts. Battery number five, 13.29 volts. Oh, this one's an overachiever. And the last one, 13.28, that's awesome. So they all came with a consistent voltage, which is awesome. What's cool about lithium is you could leave them on the shelf uh, under no load and they basically won't lose any charge for about a year or so. Um, something I like about these also is that it's the same size as other batteries. So. If you've got another battery in your system, you could pull out that old battery and slide in this one and probably over double your capacity just because this is a lithium versus a lead acid. So there's uh, there's perks to lithium, definitely perks. Ooh, yeah. Primer's dry, Brian did a great job. Time to paint. Lucky Brian knows what he's doing with all these things. I believe these are the bits that go with the Lynx distributor. This is the Lynx distributor. Ooh, fancy. These next components that we're taking out are definitely the brains of the system. This is all the stuff that distributes the energy properly without blowing anything up, I think. So Battleborn sent us fuse holder for the battery bank, along with some fuses and a cable. We're gonna figure out what to do with all this stuff, don't you worry. So our next step is to pull all this stuff out and then we're gonna play Tetris with all the components in the underbody to make sure that we set them up nice and that they make sense for running wires because some of these wires are super thick, which makes them super expensive. The thicker the wire, the more expensive the wire. So we want to think this out um, so that we're not wasting money on wires. Oh, this is the thing that I think goes upstairs so we can monitor our batteries. Ooh, here is the charge controller. Looks like someone already opened this. They did because they pre-program it. Oh. <laughs> at, at Battleborn, they pre I thought it was just joking because I thought it was you. If you didn't know, Battleborn's actually an authorized distributor of Victron Energy, which is why they sent us some of these components, which are Victron components like the Lynx distributor, the charge controller, and then also the inverter, which we're about to unbox here. But this is all the stuff that takes the solar from the sky, those, those sun rays, and it changes it into something that's usable that you could then plug in your fridge, you could plug in your laptop, and you could even run a circular saw if you wanted to. This is the inverter. Let's see, it's got some instructions, looks like some adhesive something or other. I don't know, we'll see what that is. Mounting bracket, wires, 
You know what? We might go inverted with this. <laughs> that was that was an inverter joke. That's a heavy one. This thing is massively heavy. Ah, oh, there it is. Look at that. This is the Victron Energy 12 volt, 3000 watt, 120 amp uh, inverter charger. So it does quite a few different things. And this thing's basically gonna be sending energy to the bus. It's gonna be pretty sweet. Next up, let's take these components and go play Tetris. Components are arriving. We're on the dark side of the bus. And the really cold side. <laughs> it's freezing <laughs> over here. Okay, so the idea is that we're going to take the components and set them up over here uh, so we can hang them off the chassis. Like maybe they go here, but I don't know if that's too far to run the wires. So will we be putting a board up and then put the components up there? Yeah, we'll figure out where everything goes and then be like, okay, what size of board do we need? Where's it gonna attach to? Mm -hmm. Is it hanging? Is it using the, the holes that are already there? Cause I really don't want to drill through it again. Right. Well, right. not ever really. Um, so we went ahead and made a diagram right here. We'll include that and get your schoolie on. So if anybody wants to download it, it'll be over there. And then with that, we'll be able to figure out where all of the wires and everything are going to connect to. We're going to need a pro upgrade. Darn tootin'. Knee pro! Yeah! <laughs> 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 all right, so we've got... Let's see, the battery bank will go somewhere. So what if this big guy goes like right there? Yeah, big guy could go there. So or wires coming down here. potentially right there, right? Yeah. So wires coming down from above, solar wires, wires to the 110 panel. The batteries are the biggest wires that connect directly to that guy. So this guy might be up here. Of the batteries? Yeah, like right about here or something like that. So if we have a piece of wood that goes across there mm -hmm. using the bolted to the holes, then we can uh, use wood screws to mount this to it. And then off of that, we're, we have the charge controller that goes to that. So that guy could go right beside them. So what if the Lynx distributor goes above the batteries yeah and then the charge, charge controller, controller goes here like so that. they both fit yeah that's a good idea that guy needs four inches of space all around it um there's gonna be plenty of space around it let's put it like this Boom. like that and then we mount then that i guess it blocks off that whole side that would block off the whole side what if we put- And that's our easy way to get into that side. Yeah, what if we put this guy, we, we clad this with uh, plywood and we mount this guy because it needs to be mounted up because there's uh, yeah. a bracket and then there's also holes on the bottom uh, that you screw into. For so the wires. Yeah, so that needs to be a minimum of four inches off the ground there. And then that'll give us easy access to take the panel off and add stuff to it. <laughs> so we also have the disconnect switch and the shunt, which will disconnect and shunt would be right here next to it. Now, if this is in this orientation, then we can't have the plywood hanging down there because it would run into the batteries right there. But we could have it like this without a problem. Uh, there's structural member underneath here, and then also there's hat channel here. So that would distribute the load of this guy right there. And it might actually have to go something like that, potentially. Now you guys might be wondering, why wouldn't you just put it right here? Because the breaker box is literally like right up here um, in our closet. So it kind of makes sense to put all the battery stuff like boom right here. So then our wire runs are shorter. The only problem with that is our water heater is gonna go right behind this gray tank right here. So we wanna be able to get access to it and we can access it from the other side, but what if we need to access it from both sides? Yeah. 
So that's the dilemma. So true, so yeah. true. So, so the wire coming from the panel up there is actually gonna connect directly to that box there. This guy, yeah. the inverter. Yeah. Nice! That looks really good. Sweet, sweet, sweet. So everything came packaged really awesome. It came on a, on a skid because everything weighed so much, even yeah. though it's uh, not that heavy stuff. I think it was like 300 pounds or something. Yeah. Yeah, um, we want to take a moment to say thank you so much to Battleborn for partnering with us on yeah. this project. Uh, we really look forward to doing some tests with this and mm -hmm. check out the energy consumption and charging with the solar panels and everything. It's yeah. going to be really, really sweet. So exciting. We're so grateful for you guys. And stay tuned for another video where we will run all of our wires and set this beauty up and get everything mounted properly. Yeah, so I think that uh, we're on to something with this layout. Uh, we may wiggle it around a little bit more once we have the wires and uh, we'll see what where that takes us. But that's it for today, folks. Bye bye. Thanks for coming.